so good evening and uh, welcome to well um, a different series for me so uh, I'm going to be running two series for my live stream for the time being and the idea is that one is going to be uh, my legends and folklore and the other one is probably going to be this one which is interesting environment so I'll get started um, let's just start thinking about what we're doing so normally if I was doing anything I'd probably um, do sort of like thumbnailing which is kind of what I'm going to do with this um, and then as I kind of build into it um, it will it, work out that's the point um, <laughs> so I will just kind of be mumbling to myself but unlike my sort of like proper scheduled stream for um, Legends of Folklore that I'm doing on Tuesdays Thursdays is for me more just going to be about streaming uh, what it is I'm, I'm just working on in my own time you know I like to draw um, and I suppose for me it's important to just make sure that I'm constantly practicing um, you know and, and developing what I want so as I kind of start I always like just focus on blocking in uh, kind of basics now people do this differently some people do this with uh, block paints and stuff and I've said before like I, it doesn't matter what way you do it you know I personally enjoy um, I personally enjoy the the more um, sketchy kind of route I think I feel it's quite uh, quite nice so at this sort of like stage you'll notice I'm doing a lot of um, doing a lot of resizing I'll move things around I'll scale things um, because you know you can draw something it can look right and then um, maybe it's not what you wanted so I do try and uh, sort of build in stuff and I always think about the actual shape of the object as well I think sometimes when I'm drawing environments it's one of my weaker points and I, I do tend to make things quite flat so I really enjoy drawing characters uh, creatures and characters like that environments have always been a weak point of mine and that's why I wanted to do this sort of mini series I feel that it's a good step into the right direction of doing more composition work so um, the composition work itself will come at a later date where I actually try and include sort of more of a story in the scene so you know I think that's important as well so um, for those of you wondering obviously I've said I'm doing a forest scene I should be more specific I'm doing a rainforest scene um, I've got a few reference images to the side that I'm just kind of I've literally just googled rainforest scene um, and I just have some of that there and I'm just snatching points off of each part and uh, at the moment I'm kind of thinking um, so even though I'm not doing obviously compositional work I'm constantly thinking about um, the layout of my composition you can't just throw things in uh, all over the place so I'm kind of going for the whole um, rule of thirds sort of thing so if I just do a new layer I can quickly show you guys um, if I do there we go so I sort of like split the page up like like so uh, there 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 and there and that's kind of rough but I know like in this point here this point here, this point here, and this point here. I've got to have something going on. So over here, I'll probably like raise and move the uh, the vine slightly, and this will become like vacant space. So this will go off, and this will fade off. That'll be sort of where my my point of interest is. Over here, I'll probably have some sort of old tree. Over here, I'll probably have something going on with the water. And here, I've got like a water kind of feature, and it's going to be sort of the waterfalls going over. So there is that element of um of kind of like a lure, like drawing you through the image so kind of get rid of that bit there um, as I said like I'll, I'll build into that but I think what I'll do for this bit is I'll build like a slightly larger sort of like tree trunk that I can maybe put some mushrooms around the bottom there or something um, that'll work as I said like you know you've got to kind of play around the how the composition kind of feels and you got to be careful with how it's going to look and what you end up with so I mean I as I said, I'm I'm always kind of wanting to practice, and I think for me, practicing environments is, as I said, a step in the right direction. Um, I don't want to. So if I do my horizon line up there, yeah, I don't want to uh, to to really 
well put that by the wayside I think you can sometimes become over comfortable with a particular style and from there or a particular um, thing that you enjoy doing so um, as I said this is not going to be brilliant but I'll build into it and we'll see how we go I might surprise myself so I've done a few interesting sort of like landscapes um, so it's always good get out there and where is that so that needs to be sort of like there so maybe I'll do sort of like a series of like little lily pads or something here maybe it can go under the under the, the fallen branch that I'm going to get kind of on there so I'm trying to I can see what this is at the moment I suppose it's it's going to take a little while for it to come come forward with um, with what I'm doing so at the moment the image feels quite tall so I don't know maybe I need something here to kind of break things up a little bit potentially do some vines or something like so and maybe do a bit more with the, the foreground here um, but then again that's looking kind of okay so as you guys have probably seen my other images I do like to turn down the the line work and then you know add in the new layer and then I can start working on more sort of like the details so I suppose what I'm going to probably do is this is my tablet by the way that lets me do this um, I'm just kind of rotating the canvas uh, you can do that through image um, image rotation and you can also do that so sort of like here um, but I, I quite like doing it this way it's quite it's a bit easier for me so um, at the moment I actually am not using transfer at all I've got um, I've got my, uh, my my brush on solid so and you know it has its benefits I think if you want if you are trying to clearly block in what it is you're doing then I think you know it's quite quite a nice way forward um, you know it's not too bad build into that here so this is going to be quite a thin branch now reason why um, if you ever look at uh, rainforest sort of imagery um, you'll find that because they're constantly competing for sun and that I mean you do get some very large um, some very large sort of uh, trees of course but you also get quite a lot that are almost pushed out of the way I mean that compared to what we know in particular in, in England and, and Europe with their forests you know pine forests and stuff and uh, coniferous forests are very rarely um, as competitive as a rainforest there's so much foliage going on that, that you know plants and trees are constantly getting pushed out of the way um, vines suffocate uh, smaller plants and stuff it's a, it's a lot more of a vicious world if you watch the um, what's it called I think it's, it's Life of Plants I think it's one of David Attenborough's and um, that's a really interesting sort of thing it talks about how actually although we don't notice it because it slow time plants are incredibly competitive and uh, I've, I always found that quite interesting um, anyway so I mean that's why you kind of build into I suppose more of a smaller spot sort of thing so whether this branch is gonna work uh, potentially I'll have it going all the way through the scene but I'll decide that later um, at the moment just kind of start thinking about more confidently so I'm kind of trying to be rough I think one of the things that you'll notice about me is sometimes I get carried away doing the line work details when I need to start actually um, I need to start maybe like blocking in more so like uh, you know it, it, you can get your values sorted then quite quite early on and, and value in an image is really important um, without it you you can end up well your image will be flat more than anything or that's what I tend to find so um, build into this one here there we go so I do really enjoy um, obviously uh, adding in detail with line work I, I I find it very therapeutic and I kind of get a bit carried away with it so you know it's, uh, you might watch me add a bit more detail than I should in this image but you'll notice I, I changed the canvas right not uh, quite a lot as well feathers like 
showed my face as well, you probably start to notice that I tilt my head back and forth quite a lot. Um, but usually the I have sort of like a little roller ball on the side that you can set up and if I tap the center I can cycle through different things. I've got auto scroll, cycle layers, brush size and rotation. And I tend to just use rotate and auto scroll zoom when um when working with my graphics tablet. But I'll still just use my my standard brush sort of thing. So I mean it's looking alright, but I feel that this bit here I think I'd rather that extend out to to here off the screen I think um, and then I can paint into that you see like so but I think that that feels a bit better going all the way across kind of almost like as a bridge through the image but um, I mean we'll, we'll, we'll see kind of how it goes uh, I've got kind of like moss growing there I might put in some sort of like let's think about putting some fungus or something here just to, this bit here needs to be really interesting, uh, in my opinion. So, well, that's what I'm feeling anyway. Um, okay. Right, just quickly do. Cut across there, like so. This is more just kind of me building into the the water part of the scene so so I'll say that I suppose landscapes can be a bit of a challenge but at the end of the day I'm quite uh, I find them a lot more rewarding sometimes I think that if you draw a character really well then then it's great you know it's someone that people can kind of uh, look at invest in you know they emotionally they can be quite attracted to a character um, but for me designing a really nice environment has just a really nice satisfying kind of feel to it maybe because it's something I struggle a bit more with um, and as a result you know uh, I like to I like to sort of develop it a bit more I like to spend a bit more time on it so um, so the stream tonight obviously I started about half eight I think we'll probably going to maybe like 10 potentially see how we go I'm quite uh, as I said I do this to relax this is kind of my how how I like uh, how I like to do my drawing just when I'm in the mood just draw So, draw that on there. So you see, if, in my opinion anyway, it's starting to come together just a little bit. Um, don't know. Okay. So, build into that there. Now, as I said, it's just a bit of a mess at the moment, but we can build into that. It's fine. Um, I think, you know, detail-wise, I might leave it like that for now. Now, reason why is I can always add in a bit of detail later. Um, if I merge that down to make those layers one, what I'll do is I'll actually paint underneath it, and the whole idea would be like value. So, at the moment, the background is a grey, and it's a grey so that I've got a nice, simple kind of like, uh, or a, a standard sort of mid tone. Um, then, oh, hold on, two seconds. Um, from there, I suppose I'm just sort of. I want to kind of put in a, a light and a dark sort of area. So like foreground can be a lot sort of like darker around here because it's closer into focus it's going to have a lot more detail it's going to have a lot more value whereas further off in the distance if you think about if you were to look away in the distance it's going to be lighter it's going to fade off um, so you know I, I suppose it's about having so if I start off with just that grey and kind of push it into darker and from here I'll just make the brush a lot bigger because I'm just at the moment I'm just getting that kind of value in there so about up to here potentially is going to be darker um, it'll probably go even darker still oh 
My computer's struggling a little bit there, that's odd. Okay. Kind of pop that there. Um, go a bit darker for these here. And I mean, as I said, I'm, I am not brilliant when it comes to to landscapes at all. So, you know, I think, uh, I think the more practice you put in, the better you get. And I mean, as I said, this streaming channel is, is not about being perfect. This streaming channel is about, I suppose in some ways it's about like almost me uh, figuring out with you guys sort of like how to do new things you know I, I mean I teach it I, I'm confident with what I'm doing but um, at the same time I think sometimes it's just nice to to uh, well you're always learning you know um, and it's about practicing those kind of like fundamental rules and stuff like that so you know that's a bit better now as you can see it's like really light here so I will go up ever so slightly now a reason i'm doing it in gray first is um shrink that brush down just a bit now the reason i'm doing it in gray first is because obviously um it, it just allows me to check the the values that i i have before i think about um color and uh aspects like that and it, it, it gives you a nice feel for for the overall image so like you know maybe i've gone a bit too dark in the in the foreground and stuff which is which is fine you know there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that um it's just about obviously finding that nice if you like gradient from start to finish um in my opinion so you know from there kind of get there and then maybe a bit lighter still Whoa, way too light yeah let's go slightly under that there we go and that's obviously meant to be the trees kind of fading off into the distance so and that's kind of helps unfortunately I'm doing a forest scene and they're quite busy so you know um, see how we go on that front okay right so this seems a bit nicer value wise um, for the sort of mid section of the of the forest potentially I mean I haven't added in any sort of like light or shadows or anything yet but I'm starting to think that this is looking a bit a bit better value wise um, and then maybe just a tiny bit darker still to maybe I've just had that it's a bit better and from there to like build into it here and that's just to get these bits standing out and see it's a bit close to that so again just a bit darker um, but still that's got like a slight tone above what what's there so yeah I mean values first lets you think about light and dark and stuff like that and then from there you can really sort of like just take your time build into it um as i said you know you've got that there potentially i'd put and i'll see how i feel later i might put like a sort of like a let's try out would that help frame it yeah let's go for that i'm going to put like a bit of a, a sort of like a tree in the foreground i mean and maybe some leaves and stuff we'll, we'll see how we kind of go i can take these away I can build them in um, we can use that to frame you see so we'll take them out for now and we'll think about it okay so I've kind of got some value going on uh, it's not great um, but I'll build into it now and see how I go uh, this is where I will put transfer back on and start sort of more painting and pipetting and stuff like that so you know I always kind of just because uh, you are still going to have even so like a foreground maybe you'd have less of, but you're still going to have sort of some highlights and stuff like that uh, and then obviously with the brush I'm using I can just sort of like blend um, what I'm doing so blend here and as I said you know um, it 
there's nothing wrong with sort of taking your time to to develop um, certain skills and I think you should never shy away from something you're uncomfortable with so if you are uncomfortable with um, say like landscapes like I am uh, or environments then you know delve into them you're not going to get better by shying away from them um, I really have for too long and that's sort of why I'm happy to to just keep practicing and developing um, so I'd potentially here just go slightly darker just to kind of build in a bit more uh, tone there and I could just blend that so you know if I if I push that like so I can blend the line there grab that new kind of gray that's where and uh, this is the really nice thing about working in grayscale sometimes that you don't really have to worry about uh, the balance of color as you blend you can just take the grays and blend them um, the only thing you've got to be cautious of is you want to keep the the tones you have out of like here so if I've got these really dark tones I don't want to go necessarily that dark here because what that'll do is that'll flatten the image it brings it forward you need to make it very clear that these are darker because they're really close in the foreground this is your mid ground and this is further away because um, if you don't do that then then you are going to face issues um, so you know like if that's your your mid tone don't go much darker or much lighter <coughs> excuse me so that's too dark already so I literally need to go maybe like half down potentially that's it so it doesn't look very dark but it is still quite uh, quite dark so my dark there is sort of like nowhere near what's there but I will sort of like still play around with these values throughout the image as I go I don't really a hundred percent kind of confirm that that's all I'm gonna use so uh, build into that there Okay, so potentially get some highlights on there, highlight on there. But as you can see, I always keep my my sort of like line work um, active early on in the image. So uh, like so, and blend. You know, blending is important. So get that one there, and just get a tiny bit darker. Now. I don't want to go too dark because obviously um, that will cause problems for me here. Okay, the idea is that your foreground should be very dark with very little tonal variation. Your background should be light with very little tonal variation, and your your main sort of like tone uh, difference should all happen sort of here in your in your focal point in the in the mid ground so like here as we said before you know here is a focal point here is here is and here um so like f you know a focal point doesn't necessarily mean that you need to put something in there in fact that can make the image quite cluttered so here where it's kind of fading off into the distance and stuff it draws the eye it, it puts you where you need to be um so I, w I do tend to keep things like this so i can keep looking back and going oh, okay this is quite good this is quite interesting um, that's kind of what I want so here for example with the water I want to just sort of like think about well how my image might kind of like well how the light might kind of work and stuff so as it stands that looks pretty good um, even here where even though these seem like on the same bit here what that does by keeping that kind of highlight there I'm always saying that these are, are almost nowhere near each other I might be standing on a ledge and this is just what my camera or my view catches so you know I think the the the, the thing that a lot of people sort of go is oh yeah I can get really light like you know I could get real light bits in there and you can to a point but you need to be very sort of like careful um, that you don't overdo it because again you what you do is you put it on the same layer as up here and it's very hard to distinguish um, between where you uh, where, where your image is and where it isn't sort of thing so um, really the problem I'm going to have in a bit is that I don't really know what's going on here the bit I keep drawing into I want it to be sort of like a little pool that kind of flows over so I might play around that concept a bit as I go um, but what I will do after I've done my values and I do this quite a lot is I then go over it again with the detail and the reason I do that is because I personally need to know where I'm going with things and, and sometimes 
um, that works and sometimes it doesn't you know this is just how I personally do things so uh, so this bit here I'm making it lighter because I feel that would be the, the water kind of flowing down um, I feel that would be a bit there that kind of goes and uh, you know it works it looks all right um, if if there's a reason for something like the water that then you're fine but if not then um, yeah you want to just be careful so like if I go up here just a tiny bit darker get under that that branch because again you know I suppose it's got to be darker a little bit we are in the rainforest so there are going to be aspects of that so over here obviously these light bits here I can go lighter not really darker so obviously you think about my light is kind of coming from above and getting a bit here but again as I said you know you, you want the shapes to feel 3d but after a while you kind of want to fade them out a little bit so here these bits may just end up having a tiny bit of light on them like so just to kind of draw them out but they don't want too much detail in my opinion so even when I start adding in my detail it'll be focused around this part of the image not this part here so if I build into that there um, and and really that's my in my opinion that'd be like my values kind of sorted um, I might like you know take some of this tone here just to kind of suggest that actually this is on like maybe like a bank or something and that's there in fact I think that looks a lot nicer it bridges the the image quite well um, just by putting that there so I've almost added another sort of element to my my mid ground and that was fine now what I'm gonna do then is build into that like so okay so yeah as I said so I'm kind of happy with that now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge my value layers down together because I've got that there I've got that there they work for me so look at where it was before take that off add that it makes a big difference in my opinion so obviously I've got this line work here you can take that off you just see the standard values it's not great but it's something so now what I'll do is and this is where we are kind of do the more like the finer stuff so if I dial that down now I'm going to kind of zoom in and I'm actually going to really think about each section um, I'm going to probably start here so uh, let's have a little look see shall we mm -hmm. okay take my dark gray and I'm gonna shrink it down and I'm really gonna just kind of think now something as well that I, I don't do enough of and I'm quite happy to admit um, I don't do enough of is I don't do enough sort of like a actual study practice um, studies are for those that aren't aware are sort of like um, best way to describe a study it's, it's like if I were to draw a sphere and then say that sphere was made out of scales and then practice drawing that how the light would hit it and stuff to me that would be uh, like a texture study and that's what I need to do more of uh, other type of study you could go out and you could uh, like take the corner of an old building and practice drawing that to get the stone kind of right or think about how the light would hit it and elements like that um, and you know like studies are important you know you can't you have to build up a mental visual library in order to draw um, I'm not an expert at all but it's actually only when I went out and started to look at things and how they kind of like worked in the world that I started to figure out a bit about how to draw them and, and you know as I said I'm in no stretch of the imagination an amazing artist so these are going to be sort of like mushrooms that grow out of or on fung uh, on on like fallen trees so like fungi and stuff so and as I said you know practice 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 think a little bit about when I do this kind of like these little uh, dotty lines and stuff that is me thinking about its texture 
a little bit. Um, as I said, I'm just trying to figure out how I want it to look, really. Uh, and I do sometimes think that combining both value and line work really does bring out quite a nice image. <laughs> Not all the time, but sometimes. And I sometimes also highlight where I want maybe like light to go. Like this bit's done it quite nicely already. But here potentially here and here and here. I potentially do light around about there. So and then as I said, you know, um I think about the texture when I'm um drawing quite often and not and there we go. Sort of start building into this now. Um, and when I zoom out in a bit, hopefully you guys will see that and I try and do the values as well because I think sometimes when you're trying to think about the texture and the overall image, um, it's quite nice to uh, see the, the shape. So I know this is always like that the branch is almost cylindrical um, in nature. So I know that by adding the light there, and it, the the light tapers off around the edge here and here. It's going to slowly sort of like shade into or or melt into um, the background, and and it gives me something. Because if I just left those lines on their own, yeah, it'd be a flat kind of like tube. Um, that's what I want to avoid uh, in particular. So like here, they're not very well drawn, but that's fine. Okay, so start building into this here okay so start adding a bit more detail there now you'll notice I try and add a bit more so like larger lines like so on the bits I know that are going to have shadow or shade um, and because it is a, a tree I'm kind of trying to make a bit that it's, it's not a smooth cylinder there is going to be a bit where the light hits across here um, as there's almost like a sharper point point of the, the, the tree, the branches. Okay, so build into that there. And build onto that like so. Okay, so zoom out of there. So I'm starting to see that actually that's that's looking quite nice, that, that branch through the middle there. And with my value on there, as I said, I'm starting to see the image and I did say that I wanted to focus more on the, the centerpiece so in a minute I'll be using this new line work and I'll be using my transfer brush to paint a bit more of a solid value because um, this is a you know I watched a really interesting tutorial as I was um, as I was actually teaching myself a long time ago and the, the tutorial did say you know like get your values right if you get your values right then the rest of the image is a doddle um, um, whether or not I agree, I mean, I I'll, I think it's really important to get your values right, but uh, and you know, I think what they're trying to say is you you won't have to spend hours trying to fix something you're not sure what it is, but you can always go back to stuff and you know when you're learning anyway, um, you know I spent hours doing things in grayscale and then I was like oh, uh, I don't actually know how to paint in color, so I just started playing around with it and I'm still quite monochromatic when I paint um, and I don't think there's an issue with that I think you can <laughs> you you learn things as you go so like what I might start doing is in particular on this image is uh, around here thinking maybe drawing in maybe some moss or something kind of like you know it, it's meant to be a jungle scene I suppose it, you know I want things to feel overgrown and uh, different so build that in there and you know uh, using quite a dark brush so I have no issue with that it's just I I tend to use a sharper brush than I did now I think as you <laughs> as you build confidence you you're more comfortable shying away from things one thing I always leave on a shape dynamics with pen pressure because obviously you know um, pen pressure I think is important but the uh, uh, that bit there I don't know about that oh it's matter we can play around with that later. I can always paint that out later. Um, but you know, what, one thing I'm always a bit dubious of is 
um, overusing transfer now. I, I used to spend hours working on line work uh, that just didn't really take off because um, I was constantly using transfer. So <laughs> an example quickly would be, you know, if I was trying to draw that on and then I'd go over it again and again and again. As you can see, it takes away a lot from it. Sometimes actually having the confidence in your brush stroke to do it without transfer, so you don't constantly feel like, oh, I need to really reassure myself that I'm not going to to ruin this. My advice is ruin it. Um, <laughs> you don't learn if you don't. Um, I destroyed several pieces of work to um, over time in, in order to get better. Uh, you know, I think <laughs> make mistakes uh, when you can really um, it's better to do it now than if you got a job doing concept art or something later down the line um, hello person who is saying Peter um, <laughs> I'm going to pretend like I don't know you that is, the, that is the point so for those of you that aren't my students some of my students do watch my live stream so okay right so building a bit more into this it's nothing personal um i thought i had a moderating thingy on the the the, the chat so um but whatever it's fine I had to approve comments now but you know what it's cool I can live with it um, so back to where I was going uh, with this yeah so practice practice is really important um, and you know and taking your time as well you know take your time make mistakes practice really simple kind of rules Okay, so build into this a bit more. I'm kind of thinking it's as I said. So we can go back to our our initial kind of like putting rules in place. So here is looking quite interesting. Around here is looking fairly boring still, but we'll get there with that. I mean, there's nothing stopping me kind of putting petals or leaves or something going over the water's edge, which make it interesting. There's nothing stopping me putting like maybe fish shadows under the the lily pad sort of area here so you know there's quite a lot that you can kind of just start building into um there we go so i'm get building into this here thinking about kind of it's really bad and maybe going a bit too traditional with my my lily pads here uh, I'll be honest with you I've not spent much time looking at lily pads that's a development point for myself so build a bit more into that there because uh, I want it to be almost like a little collection and they do group together they almost they almost form like a carpet um, it's said and I've not been but it has been said that if you go to the uh, the rainforest, pick whatever one you want, the foliage that grows on the the rivers actually uh, stops you from being able to distinguish the the edge of the river at points. So it is kind of important to emulate that the best you can. This is, I mean, you know. Uh, I'm not really drawing for purpose here, like this is just a really relaxed um, image that's kind of, where is it, what do you suppose, sorry I'm just reading, so where would you say it's best to start environment art, um, I always find it hard to sit down and draw for a long period of time, I always end up focusing on tiny details before the main image, I suppose, do you know what, I was exactly the same, um, that's a really good question. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer it but I suppose it was always exactly the same and I, I think it is difficult I think the the thing I would say to people is you know um, try and um, try and I don't know 
try and break away and and do as much sort of like uh, thumbnailing quick concepts as you can. Once you build up that that initial confidence, um, you're more likely to um, you're more likely to sort of like uh, spend longer times at doing it. I think the problem is is that if you were to do something like a character right, and you spend I don't know the hour of if you like patience that you've got drawing an eye um and it looks amazing it's rewarding and that reward kind of sends a signal to your brain that goes awesome i want to sit down and i want to do that again okay uh same with things like you know like 3d modeling because you have to block things in first um you end up with a, a really nice thing that you enjoy um quite early on and i think best way to describe it i guess is um by doing those sort of like shorter images or even doing studies so like really quick so like sketches um you, you kind of reward your brain quite quickly that's why it's really easy to draw characters i personally find because if i were to draw something like um an eye i, I can draw that really quickly and it can make it look really good really quickly and because of that i you know um I, i'm more likely to spend at like hours on a character because every part of that character is a quick win now you could do the same for um, an environment image but i suppose the thing you've got to think about is is it as rewarding drawing say a rock or <laughs> is, it, is it as rewarding drawing a um like you know a, a waterfall and stuff probably not you know um you relate to things like human eyes on on more of a personal level you know um that you build like contact with people through looking at their eyes you know they say eye contact is a really important um, aspect of when you're having a conversation with a potential new employer and stuff like that so there, there are lots of elements of um of of sort of like what you're drawing to, to how rewarding it is and that's why you know everyone wants to draw a character art is uh, a character art and not everyone wants to draw landscapes um but you know one of the things they say is obviously like I'm drawing a landscape in this way, but if uh, and obviously my degrees in game design, but if you're going into games design, um, a lot of people say that um, you know actually the 3D modeling side of it is more important to be an environment artist. So being quick and sketchy is, um, you know, like it, it's difficult, I suppose. Um, sorry, just another question came up and distracted me. I hope that, I hope that answers your question anyway, or, or kind of helps. Um, so, I've met any artists that struggle with seeing correctly. I feel like I'm the uh, same way, especially when colleagues who draw wonderful little art tell me, "Just draw your things, see." Um, yeah, okay. So that it sounds crazy, but it is really you have to. People say just draw the things, um, draw the things you see, and, and and it's one of the things that the thing is you'll get. There are two types of people. You can be good at something, um, but you're not necessarily very very good at teaching it just because you're good at it. And and that's all almost like the uh, it's almost like to, like you know somebody you ask like a professional footballer, oh how do you do it? And he goes, I don't know. I just get on the pitch and I kick the ball, right? But a football teacher will be able to tell you the theories behind it. And I suppose uh, once I practice, I feel like my skills. If I don't practice eight hours a day. It's so, hard uh, find that outside of work to do. Um, so I feel like my skills. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's difficult with like you know with like staying focused on um, on artwork in particular. Like you know, so people say, oh yeah, draw. Sorry, back to my original point. I'll ask the answer the first question and then. I'll comment on the bit after, but so I suppose when people say, "Oh, yeah, just draw the objects you see," it, some people are naturally very good at that. Just like some people are naturally very good drivers, some people are naturally very good at, um, you know, maybe like uh, oh, I'm trying to think of another thing that people do. Um, I don't know ice skating, yeah. Okay, so um, some people are good runners, some people are good at rugby at school, and you know that's all well and good, and they don't really know how they do it. But it's somebody that does know how they do it. You train yourself to go out, so you actually have to actively think about um, the the thing you're doing. So if you go out and they say, yeah, you've got to look at 
at shapes, for example, um, then you have to you actually have to sit there and go right what shapes are in this image so you don't just draw the shapes you see you go what shapes are in this image so i would look at it and i'll go okay this branch here what is it and then i sort of break that down into okay this is a cylinder or it is a rectangle with curves or whatever you want to do um and that isn't easy you know uh it's like training to see actual colors because the thing is uh, we have something called chunking that's what our brains do so our brains chunk information um, your morning routine and everything like that it's all chunked information it's something that you do on um, on re repeat so it's something that your brain just kind of chunks together as one big bit of information so what I suppose uh, your, your brain does is it fills in the blanks um, you know there, there's that sort of the study they did with um, where people read like words um, but they were all sort of like misspelled apart from the first and the last letter were sort of like in exactly the 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 same place um, so you know like I suppose your brain put fills in the gaps so if you for example um, sorry everyone just give me two minutes I just want to quickly to help illustrate my point <laughs> let me just do a quick uh, 1000 by 1000 okay so when you're young one of the key things that you do is you draw an eye like this with or like this yeah okay um or like that Ugh, that's too eye like hold on oh wait my eraser is orange that's right on um uh, never mind on that one right so the idea of um of like the eye when you're a kid drawn like that and actually the 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 idea of an eye is that it's made up of several different shapes so you've got like a circle and it leads onto that and that leads round and you've got lots of different parts to it but when you're younger you can't you can see sort of part of the shape but you you have to learn to differentiate that and I think that's that's kind of where your brain chunks this information it thinks it sees something even when it hasn't and I think you have to actively train yourself out of that um, you have to actively sort of say to yourself, no, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write down what these shapes are. And from there, you can actually start drawing them. And it's a lot easier than you think. Um, but it does take practice. And I think even if you're doing eight hours a day, I mean, when I was at university, I did. I, I don't want to say I was told I wasn't very good. It wasn't that I was told I was not very good at all. Um, a really helpful lecturer sat down with me and said, your images are flat. You're not applying perspective. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. So um, him and another one of my lecturers actually went away and encouraged me to to constantly work and constantly develop my own skill set. Um, and when I did that and it took me a long time. I mean, like I was doing, like you said, I was doing like eight hours a day, every day <laughs> in order to develop myself. And I realized there's a, there's a difference between productive practice and unproductive practice. So it's very easy to say to yourself, I'm going to do eight hours today how much of that are you actually taking in if you look at the brain the the best way to learn is to do sort of like 20 minute blocks so my advice would be try and do 20 minutes of one image take a break come back to it or do a different image and flip between them and actually do like short quick studies and you'll find yourself learning a lot more because you're re-engaging your brain every time if you um don't then you're at a point where your brain switches off like like for example when i'm doing these details now i really shouldn't be because what i'm doing is my, my brain currently is in autopilot it's looking at things and it, it's comfortable doing something so it just keeps going and like you know doing what it wants to do and there's nothing wrong with that but it is about i suppose actively doing it and it can be tiring like and i mean tiring because you're constantly having to re-engage your brain so you're constantly having to like really i suppose drill your head and push yourself forward and, and it gets very tiring and quite exhausting so my advice would be you know set yourself up rather than say i'm going to do eight hours today and practice 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 sort of say well what can i draw today that's out of my comfort zone 
that would allow me to to to, uh, to develop something like I'm doing today. So I'm sort of sitting there going, okay, I'm going to do an hour, two hour stream, um, and in that stream, I'm going to draw an environment. And I don't know if I'm going to finish it. I have, um, you know, I, I have no sort of like allegiance to it. But it's about being comfortable with with stopping as well and sort of going, okay, now's enough. Another quick trick um, before I obviously like. Uh, stop rambling because I do realize I'm rambling I apologize to my eight viewers um, <laughs> but you can go uh, image image rotation and you can flip horizontal now by flipping the canvas you get a whole you trick your brain you get a whole new look on this so whereas before I was quite comfortable doing what I'm doing now I'm looking at I'm going oh my god what have I done okay and from there I now have a new perspective to look at it and hopefully in a minute you'll sort of see where I'm going with that so I'm kind of building into it now and I'm going to turn my transfer back on and this is where I'm going to go back into now I've got all my tones now I've got everything I kind of need so I'm going to work back into my image so um, pick a PT animations I hope that was helpful anyway I'm sorry if it was just me rambling at you but um, yeah <laughs> Okay, so let's sort of go back into here and sort of there. Yeah, so um, for those of you that are my students, you do realise I ramble, but for those of you who that was an unpleasant shock, I apologise. Okay, so now one of my guilty things is actually putting a bit too much light into this image after um, after I've decided my values but in this case I potentially will work a bit more in just a bit uh, yeah I mean I do you know what that is that is me in a nutshell I think I, I absolutely love teaching um, but that is something I always worry about as well is that not being able to um, I suppose not being able to constantly get practice in and constantly um, I worry about it so I think I think every um, every person that doesn't get to draw every day will will worry about it and you know one thing that I did for a little while that really helped me kind of pick pick back up and get back on where I've um where I kind of was going was I um I started a small sketchbook and I mean a small sketchbook um A5 no more than that and when I started doing that um I started feeling really good about myself because I could do sort of like a small 15 5 to 15 minute drawing and it it genu uh, gen <laughs> genuinely helps quite a lot because you don't feel the um, you don't feel the pressure as much, but you do feel quite um, quite good about about what it is you're sort of like doing and practicing and stuff. Um, focus mark. Oh, actually, thank you, Black Mask. You are <laughs> you have correct. Let's just quickly save this as um, okay. Uh, focus on illustration more specifically frame by frame animations catalyst improve no totally that's that's a really good way of doing it that's something that I personally have never had the patience for as frame by frame animation I mean you like um, it's fantastic in practicing things like uh, like if I was to draw um, sort of like in, uh, emotion and stuff that's a really good way of, of going forward um, I've always enjoyed doing that uh, I've never been able to shade well. I mean, if you've never been able to shade well, my my big kind of bit of advice would be do nothing but shading. Like <laughs> practice shading every day. Um, you'll see. A, a, and I'm just in case anybody is watching who is like a <laughs> uh, you know constantly like drawing similar things, and that there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if that's what you're comfortable with, you know, I knew people who for years I used to think oh they were the best artists in all the land and in actuality that 
they could draw one thing very well um and i think you know shy shy away from that uh practice everything and anything and if you're not comfortable with it practice it because i promise you it will help with the things you are good at in the long run because you can apply that um in your own way uh, i didn't like i suppose get all right at what i do overnight um i really did have to work at it and i promise you that like it was not i'm i was never naturally a talented artist at all so you know keep 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 at it and keep working One second, so where would my I suppose with shading it'd be um like with sort of like getting that that positive feedback for me if I were to do it, it would be just practicing something like a sphere and getting that right. Um like best way to describe it. If I were to, to draw the sphere and I were to do that well and I was quite happy with what I produced, it would, I suppose, encourage me to apply it to more complex shapes in more detail and stuff. And that's something that I'd really enjoy doing. Um, I mean, the the trick is, and I say this to a lot of people, not just the ones I teach stuff, but like, I would say, I would say, don't bite off more than you can chew that as i said it's all about productive practice uh and really like pushing yourself forward in in but within reasonable limitations if that makes sense so um i suppose by doing sort of like a sphere first and maybe looking at doing a cube and doing those sorts of studies you'll gain a lot more confidence than you think in um in the artwork you're doing like when you try and apply that to you know uh something else i mean you might even try applying it in the form of an animation so if you do enjoy animation doing sort of frame by frame stuff then apply it in animation format and if you do then I, you know you'll probably start feeling a lot better about it in the sense that it's something you're comfortable with combined with something that you're new at so for example for me i i love environments um and I love sort of like, you know, I will always go down and draw elements of environments, but I'm never thought I was very good at them. Um, it's only later that I sort of said to myself, I'm going to, um, I suppose, combine it with something I'm comfortable with, which is which is digital painting. Um, so like if you ask me to do, say, uh, environment art in the sense of like a sculpt, which is what I tried to do at university, it went so poorly and I did really badly at it. It deterred me for a long time from um, from reapplying myself to environments. But I think that's just one of those things. That I, it's only recently I've sort of said to myself, I'm going to pick this back up again. And, you know, like right now, I'm, you know, I don't intend to add colour. I'm just practising on the values. So I know that that's going to be something um, I've developed today. And I'm I'm happy to say that, you know, that's something I've done. I hope that helps anyway and I hope that helps answer some questions I know it was a bit kind of jumbled I'm not very good at focusing on two things at once but yeah uh, so each game has its own art style but do you, but so do artists themselves so my question is how do you adapt your art style to fit the games as projects you're working on okay so that's an interesting one if you um, look at so so sorry for uh, because I'm on watch my work as well um, and also because these these questions don't save and I don't want to seem like a crazy person rambling to myself and the feedback um, so the question is sort of like I've noticed playing through games that each game has its own art style but so do artists themselves so my question is how do you adapt your art style to fit the game project you're working on so it, it's an interesting one I suppose like what you normally find is you'll have like a there'll be like lead artists and stuff like that and the lead artists will have the the style if you like and your concept artists will 
I suppose produce images that can be kind of topped up from your um, it, that can be developed from uh, oh, what was I saying yeah so the concept artists will come up with quick ideas and the the artist will pick it and that will go to sort of like the lead artist and the lead artist will be it will have been hired for their art style so um, you know I think that um, sorry <laughs> uh, I, th I think that you know like they'll have sort of um, one person will be the main focus of uh of the of the final art pieces if that makes sense you know um but at the same time i think uh practice um you know like or or they'll be hired for the particular art style to be able to show that you can do a multitude of things that's what i would say to people like you know for example if you really enjoy drawing anime that's fine but you know try other things out um you know i i have tried uh, cartoon and and um, all sorts of stuff just to just to say I can uh, really and and I feel that as you get more confident in your artwork as well you can start looking at styles and emulating that's why they get you to do things like when you're at school in art class they get to try drawing in the technique of several other artists because they want you to be confident um, doing what you're doing uh, I hope that helps so um, so it helps a bit with the You sit me down and show me two color palettes. One is a bad color choice, the other have. Um, okay, so it helps a bit, but I feel like I just said, huh? If you sit me down and show me two color palettes, one is a bad color choice and the other has color harmony, I won't be able to point out the two. How does one develop a sense within the mind's eye? Um, honestly, I think it's not just about drawing it's about studying um, the theory behind it so that's color theory and a book that really helped me uh, in particular with color theory was actually James Gurney's uh, color and light um, it was it was little things from him like saying that uh, a blue you know like a, a blue could be used to create a, a cool shadow that's something that had never crossed my mind before you know um he did the artwork for for the dinotopia kind of uh, book series and stuff and uh, i mean when you read that you do start to pick things up you know and you know color harmony is a difficult one because i mean you've got um you've got obviously like colors that go together such as like yellows and oranges and stuff like that but then you've got things that like you've got um complementary colors which are you know the opposite side of the color wheel so it's really difficult to to kind of gauge um this sort of stuff quite early on uh all i'd say is you know it, the read up on it and once you have that information it's a lot easier to kind of i suppose tell yourself ah oh, it's this it's that and, and you know you're never going to get that just from from looking unless you you are really good and i mean if other people disagree with that that's absolutely fine personally um for me it took a lot of study i, I you know i've read a lot of <laughs> a lot of art books um around that because you know it's something i really wanted to do and i i suppose when you want to do it it's easier to go away and read the art book so yeah i'd recommend james gurney's color and light because it, it, i found that really useful um as a as a book uh, in particular um, because it's got a lot there about color theory um, and he he goes he's goes into real good depth for that so definitely read up on that so a bit of an odd one how do you focus on art with a lot of background noise my family are anything but all right i find the attention span drops harshly one reason i work through the night um super loud music do you know what i actually find that more uh disruptive um than than helpful is that strange <laughs> i i find it when i'm writing anything um or when i'm d designing anything uh, more than anything i prefer peace and quiet so like right now I i'm not listening to any music and if i was to listen to any form of music it would be maybe um like something really simple like it's gonna sound ridiculous like um non-vocal chill step like something really kind of instrumental uh, maybe some jazz 
some hip hop, something like that. I I don't really like um, really kind of heavy uh, heavy vocal based stuff, and and it's the same with sort of like I suppose when you're uh, you know you've got your family about and stuff, and if you know that it is a difficult thing. I mean, you've got two choices: you either get used to it, which sounds a bit like a hard oh, just deal with it sort of thing and and you condition yourself to get used to it or and this is the other sort of thing you push yourself into sort of like um you, you find ways to deal with it now i my <laughs> my family allowed as well um like uh i don't know yeah like my family's quite loud as well so like i was quite lucky in the fact that they acknowledged that like you know uh, 24 years down the line and they eventually got me noise cancelling headphones and they make a big difference and if you've got the money they're a worthy investment because you don't have to put anything loud on um you can put on something quite mellow quite relaxing um like just literally like sounds of the rainforest something like that and the noise cancelling will do the rest so you don't have to blare really loud music you can just have something quite nice quite relaxing and quite um chilled out which i tend to find tend to find like helps quite a lot i hope that was helpful a bit darker in there I have to admit, guys, you know, this is a real, uh, real q and A. I'm, I'm not complaining, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot to take half nine on a, on a Thursday night. <laughs> okay, so, a lot of sort of like values. Um, Okay. Right, building it up there. Okay. So I'm kind of at a point where I'm kind of happy, I guess, with this. I mean, I'm flipping the canvas again. I feel a bit too complacent with it. Uh, it's a tricky one at the moment i'm slightly concerned the water doesn't look like water so i'll probably lighten that ever so slightly and then i'm quite happy with the log in the center this tree here um i'm happy with this now obviously like it doesn't look very detailed but the idea is that you don't want it to be you want the people's focus to be on the interesting parts of the image and then eventually fade out into the bits in the background so you know you don't want to put too much emphasis on the 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 trees in the background if these were as detailed as this you wouldn't know where to look the image would seem cluttered and it would seem very flat so it's all about kind of like making sure you've got a nice fade off into the distance or what i tend to find anyway um okay so Hmm, water. Let's think a little bit about you. I'm probably going to do that on a new layer and really think about how I'm going to do this. Right. I'm looking at some reference images of how water is applied. So um, if you bear with me just a minute, I'm just going to find something water esque. I mean, that's quite a nice image. So. I do, uh, I vary in what I do, sometimes I build a, um, sometimes I build a, a mood board, um, and other times I, I will just, uh, I will just have like a Google search open, and from there I will, um, I suppose decide, uh, what sort of images I'd like to see, so, what I'm going to do is take this this colour here and just add a slight highlight on that and probably go from there. Now, 
drawing water has always been a pet peeve of mine so there is probably going to be some tutorials coming up on this for those of you that aren't aware I will be doing um, a tutorial series for the channel uh, where I kind of go into a lot of detail um, hopefully on, on the basics and then I'll probably start going into more kind of complex stuff that I mean it'll be a tutorial but at the same time it'll be something that I'm learning as well um, so I'm hoping that the benefit of that is that you know it'll be <laughs> I'll be talking you through the stages because I'll be doing the stages myself um, you know and I think that's quite a good thing sometimes for a tutorial I think if you know how to do it really well you can forget to well you forget what people can do I, I've done it before I forget people can't use Photoshop um, sometimes and I, I just go oh, okay so just click on this and they go, uh, and I go oh right <laughs> that's fine I said that is this and then I'll explain it but it does happen in the sense of um, you can forget I mean I'm not a fan but I'm wondering if a texture brush might be an idea but I'm talking a, a texture brush I've kind of adapted and edited that's maybe going to help quite a bit with the, the water here the idea behind it anyway give a bit of texture to the also oh, actually in some ways that kind of works um, water obviously when it's quite hot you do get uh, steam or not steam yeah steam kind of steam coming off the the top of the water so um, that is something that I am obviously considering or looking at so shrink that down or so, so okay fog yeah fog steam that sort of thing I'm thinking because obviously it's obviously like the Amazon um, rainforest sort of thing I suppose steam is just my first instinct in the fact that it's quite warm isn't it and I suppose it takes the layer off the top of the water so let's build into that there I've done that there um, we need to do tutorials could you do a section at the end with some exercises which could help with that specific topic yeah like uh, definitely I think um, I'm quite happy to to do that uh, I think that you know um, if, if people feel that would help then I'm more than happy to to, to add in that section uh, I think I think that's a great idea um, really uh, I think just things that I've done I guess to, to help off like you know as I'm learning to do it um, things that I I did when I was learning to do it uh, would be I suppose would hopefully be quite good okay so um, uh, I find my sculpting work takes a lot from my drawing so I watch a lot of tutorials on creating textures etc but I but I because I find planar modeling easier I just end up doing that yeah I mean that again is going back into that that comfort zone I was mentioning before um, you know that you got to kind of break out of in small steps and I mean do you know what it's really easy um, for me when I was doing my degree believe it or not it was actually unity um, I, I hated unity I, I don't know why like I've got no issues with it now it's a really um, straightforward software to use it's on the same par skill level wise as say like Photoshop or something like that and, and yet I used to absolutely despise using it and I could I couldn't tell you why um, and it was only when actually I sat down one day and I went okay let's have a look at this that I, I, I suppose I, <laughs> I got over that and I think the thing is drawing can seem really intimidating and I the issue I have is that when I like you know when when I've seen before so a lot of people come in having been told they they can't draw or they feel it's like something like maybe like singing 
something like that. I'm not saying that not everyone can sing, but singing comes down to, I suppose, like your vocal capacity and stuff like that, which you can train to be all right at. But it's all about, um, uh, do you have sort of like a natural talent in it? I don't believe um, artwork is something you, you're naturally good at at all. I, I was terrible. <laughs> But I practiced and I, I learned it because it's something I wanted to do. And I think anyone can get to a good standard. I had um, a lecturer who he, he just, well, he didn't despise it, but he, he said that drawing was never really his thing. And yet he could like knock out a, a Z brush model in like the, the blink of an eye, the blink of an eye. And I mean, like he was really um, confident in what he was doing and stuff like that. And I suppose like with with anything um it was practice for him that kind of got him down to that level and that is something that i i always say to people like, you know practice 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 like and practice things you, you're not comfortable with it's great to practice the things you are uh, as i said you can be amazingly good at drawing um i don't know uh, you could be amazingly good at drawing say you're really a big fan of the hobbit um you could be really good at drawing the smau uh drawing smaug um, you could draw them every single day for the rest of your life, but if I asked you to draw, um, I don't know, uh, draw Frodo, then you'd be absolutely so sort of like done. You you wouldn't know where to start because it's, it's almost like two different things. And I suppose that's the thing, you know, get out of your comfort zone and push into something that you're not necessarily happy with. And also, yes, Black Mask missed mist or fog they're the two sort of they're the two things that i'm thinking of so i'm probably at a stage where i'm happy to start thinking maybe a little bit about color but whether i want to that's the question guys do i want to add color ah screw it let's add color i'm going to try doing it with an overlay and see how i go um this could go horribly wrong but that's fine because we've saved it i'll just do a quick save and then let's just try it out let's start with so complementary colors green ready browns so let's do go for some green and We'll try just whoa, quite dark. And also, for those of you wondering why there's a bit of lag on my brush, um, <laughs> we have a 10,000 by 10,000 pixel sort of like image here. So, um, oh, here we go, guys. Now we're talking. Uh, potentially going to go back and put them in a bit darker. Ooh, okay, a bit too dark, too dark. So, as I said, I, I really do play around with values quite a lot. Um, beauty of Photoshop, though, is that you can... Uh, looks a lot more like water now and colour, please. Okay, awesome. Um, <laughs> looks a lot... Ooh. Okay, so, actually, I should probably clarify what I just did there. Um, so, I am using and what i should be using because i'm a bad person is i should be using a color palette which i'm not now um i'm just giving it a think of where to go with this so bear with me uh i'm thinking now although i said that it gets lighter going to the back I'm actually going to keep my light in the foreground. I've never done that before, but I feel like if I was in the Amazon rainforest, there'd be a break in the canopy where the tree's fallen, and that's where I'm going to see the light hitting the water. The background is going to be dark again, but the foreground is still going to be darkest. So actually, I've got almost like this vibrant highlight here and I'm quite happy with that and then that's my greens anyway 
Um, what I probably want to do is play around with mm, some different colors. No, maybe. Um, what if I did more uh, that sort of brown? Now, a lot of the times, the stuff I do, I'll be honest here, I just play around with it till I think it looks all right. Um, <laughs> I, I'm in no way, shape, or form confident with colour. Um, and I think, you know, it's okay not to be confident with colour at all. The point is you're learning. So, uh, well, these are going to be darker brown anyway because of the fact that it's logs and stuff. This is probably greeny blue. Um, I still want to kind of grab that green and add that over here potentially and then, yeah I mean like I'm just gonna kind of blend colors and get so like a kind of the beauty of an overlay layer is that you can just kind of really mash the colors together and it just adds to what you've already got there so it's quite nice um, I would take the lighter a lot lighter Take that, blend that in there like so, and blend it till it fits. Now, I know maybe for some people they're looking at it, they're going, but you just did all that work while you're now almost like erasing some of that stuff. And you know what? It is strange. And for me, I, I sometimes just, I need it. I need to do all the kind of work. If I don't, then I just, I get lost. I forget I don't know what my image is and that's that whole sort of like um, thumbnailing kind of process uh, in in a lot of ways is I suppose going through the, the the motions of getting that quick sketch so you know what goes where and then building into it but as you can see a lot of my initial work is staying there and that's what's keeping that kind of like it gives that idea of uh, line work and stuff like that so um, Get maybe a bit more of that kind of darker up around the edges or over the, the trees themselves. Um, as I said, like I've got just some greens and browns in here. I'm not really using any particular uh, sort of stuff. I mean, if I want to, I could go into sort of like, it's going to sound weird, but purples. Purples make for like a really nice kind of uh, shadow and stuff. And you can add, I mean, like when I say <laughs> use purples, well, I am just talking about like tints. Because, you know, greens and reds and stuff like that are quite common complementary colours. And then, obviously, with the reddy browns, you've just got that kind of purple feeling, or so I find. Um, maybe going all right. We'll see how it goes. We'll just keep kind of playing around with it. And uh, potentially, as I said, potentially get a bit more light in the back there. Because at the same time, it's like the light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing. So once I've done like obviously my overlay layer, what I tend to do is I tend to start um, actually painting into stuff and trying to get like detail in that. This is just kind of gi giving me that um, that initial uh, color that I want. So, and as I said, you know like. In the foreground, I want kind of like the lighter aspect. And the overlay layer as well allows you to add, sort of like without messing up with like your light and your dark and stuff, it allows you to add like a, a really nice degree of um, of tone and stuff to it still. So, just as I'm going through this, I am really thinking about um, whereabouts my my image sort of is so wh where is my branch in relation to like these trees so they're kind of close to each other and that's why this is starting to take on some of that that shadow that highlight even um, there but as it kind of goes up it will lose some of that um, the water and stuff is again quite close so um, but I might even make sort of my moss or more reddish and go from there uh, shrink that down Go 
sort of like that sort of thing. Maybe, hmm, probably not. Maybe yellows, yellowy greens. Just give that a go. And yeah, I like that. And you know, sometimes it is about what you prefer, what you like, and stuff like that. At the moment, the foreground's quite green, so. Um, which makes sense. I mean, water's reflective and the trees all around, it would probably be greenish. Um, so I'm not too bothered by that. Uh, but I'll probably add some blue to it. But probably with a bigger brush. Okay. To be fair, this is a bad choice of colour because the water is not blue. The water would be like brown. It's the Amazon. Um, but it's all about what works. You can have some blue in there still. There's there's nothing stopping us, you know. So. Uh, um, now, one thing I've been really bad with. I wanted this to be sort of over the water, the the branch, but one thing I haven't actually bothered to do is um draw a shadow. So uh god that's horrible. Right, build into that there. Okay, so I mean I'm kinda happy-ish I think the, the rocks in the foreground need to change maybe like more like this but I mean as it as initial colors go um, yeah maybe blue does make a cool shadow you are correct don't want a cool shadow though I want a warm shadow what would that be yellow maybe mm, we'll see okay that's a good Start. Anyway, it looks a bit of a mishmash, but the thumbnail's looking okay. So the reason I have this here is I always sort of say, if the thumbnail looks all right, then you're t you're doing a good job. If it doesn't, then the image is bad. So always check your thumbnail. Um, you know, but this is where now I'm going to kind of zoom in. Um, I'm on top of all my layers now, so whatever I do now is going to go kind of over the top. So this is where I kind of start start the the, the tough paint excuse me the tough painting so that's where I kind of really start building into it you know um, I've got my values in there I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing now I start adding in my own highlights and stuff and you know that's fun this is like this is something I enjoy anyway so um. Probably going to about half past, guys. And if I don't finish this today, potentially, depending on how I feel, I might finish it tomorrow. Um, if not, it'll. But I might even make this my sort of Tuesday stream next week. I'm actually really enjoying um, doing this one. But I potentially, I still need to finish off the Alicanto for those of you that have been. What was that? No thought about blocking color. Also, yeah. The, I mean. The issue you're going to have with just going for the detail first, and you've probably seen it a bit here, is that you lose a lot of um, you lose a lot of the, the the stuff you've done as you go. Uh, you know, like you do it, and then you go, okay, I've I've lost, um, I've I've lost everything I just did, and then you forget about where your image is and what you're doing, or I tend to find anyway. Um, you know, uh, and and it's it's not a failure. It's a, it's a lesson. That's that's something really important to remember. Never sort of like tell yourself you failed, because then you're just gonna put yourself in a really awkward position. Because then you're gonna lose kind of interest and hope with it and stuff like that, and you don't want that. Yeah, you want to be constantly driving yourself forward, and saying you failed is always a bit of a, um, bit of a bit of a rolling statement it, it, rolling in the sense that it's got very little control and it can do a lot of damage to your own self-esteem 
And sometimes it's easier to say, oh, I failed to, as, a, as a joke. But really, it's important to look at it and go, well, where did I go wrong? What, what did I not do? You know, so hopefully now, I, you mean, you know, you might try and blocking and see how it goes. It's really hard when you first start to do the right thing. Your body tells you, like, or your mind tells you, oh, I want to do, um, you know, I, I want to just draw in the detail. I like details. Uh, and then from there you have to kind of train yourself to actually go no I don't want to do the details I just want to do the, the overall colour first and then once you've got that you, you've got a whole feel for the image I know what this is kind of looking like now so um, you know one of those things so although these fungi are going to be like brown I'm going to make them more red I think um, I can build in some colour. So I still keep the transfer on because what that does that still gives me a lot of the uh the original kind of like tones and stuff to work with. Um or so I believe. But at the same time sometimes it's nice to just repaint into stuff and I tend to go diagonally if I'm doing a highlight on something I've already got kind of tones on and that uh, gives a nice kind of brighter element and stuff so it's actually been a long time since I've uh, really just kind of sat down and, and enjoyed drawing again and uh, I have to admit I'm really glad that um, getting into this sort of like live streaming it's a really nice way to to keep working on the things you enjoy and you know get a bit of I suppose what I was talking about earlier a bit of that kind of positive feedback on things um, there we go. a bit of that dark red in there where it's closer to the log and blend that across. So, and then you should get some of that green there as the undertone. There we go. Alright, so start building there again for this bit now so my brush is actually on a hundred percent opacity um, what I've got on is transfer here with control and pen pressure and all it is from there is it's just practice on um, on sort of like doing it you know you've got to be sometimes you've got to go really light with what you're doing with your brush um, you know other times you can press hard and get like the solid kind of tone out there um, but I think I'm just so used to working with uh, transfer on that it's just something that comes quite naturally to me when I'm painting uh, hope that helps <laughs> just try it out though definitely I think um, one of the big things that people sometimes maybe do is they jump straight into using um, using sort of like a solid brush and or, or another one is and this one happens quite a lot a lot of people jump straight into texture brushes and I sort of say to people well, understand how a circle brush works first once you understand that you can really kind of then you can start building into your sort of textures and uh, your, your overall design and stuff like that. And then, so you know, I will start uh, building into the actual log itself as well. But I quite like keeping some of the the line work. I think it it works quite quite nicely. Um, you know. Uh, keeping some of the lines, I think it helps add to the detail. And as you go over it with the transfer brush, it fits a lot better as well because it gets some of the tone that you were originally um, using. 
But I mean, don't forget, like on this log, it needs some of like the reflectivity of the water coming back up it and all sorts. So there's quite a lot still to do in this image, but um, I will get there slowly but surely. Grab that tone there. So you guys will notice I go kind of like back and forth to, um, to sort of like blocking in again where I've sort of like figured out a colour I'm comfortable with, say like with the moss. I'll then kind of block in a base tone so I don't forget where I was going with that. I'm going to show these little bits here. And you know, like just because you've drawn something, don't be afraid to go out of the lines. You can kind of really paint that in after. If it was a, any other object, it would be you know it would blend together anyway so um yeah let's get to know yeah i mean color is such a difficult one even i sort of sit there and go what am i doing um where do i want to go with this because i'm not entirely sure and i'll be honest with you, i st i'm still not like uh, a really sort of like well any other artist might look at this and go you've done a terrible job here like you know like your colors all over the place and I like to think that I'm slowly getting better um, but you know I think as I said before it's just sort of like practice and all that and knowing where to sort of go and I, I mean I feel I've got better I do not by any long stretch say I'm good at color because I you know it does take practice to be really good at color and you'll notice that people that are really confident with color produce very good artwork because they don't need to add the the details um they can do it all through uh the the application of color which is a reason to um to, to practice it i guess um so like even when i do this here what i do sometimes tend to do when i want to add detail still um but i'm at the sort of like painting stage what i'll do is i'll turn my transfer off so I've got that as my brush with pen pressure on but then I'll get sort of like a really dark version of the colour I'm using like brown and that's when I'll sort of like start just adding in just a few kind of key details again just to kind of sharpen the image up again um, you know like bark has uh, small cracks in it and stuff that even in the light would have um, bits where the light was kind of hiding away Okay, so happy with the log, got some nice colour on there, happy with the backdrop at the moment, uh, didn't want too much detail in there anyway, it's just this bit that's making me feel a little bit poorly. Um, let's think. I mean, uh, sorry, just stretching my back, I need, I need to do something with this, I don't like that yellow anymore. Um, or do I? It's a tricky one. Um, potentially go a bit more, so like a bit darker with it, like so. Ooh, turn off the solid colors. Turn on my transfer. Mm, add in a bit there. I mean, this is kind of create creative license. I mean, you know. Um, could have been red, could have been green. I mean, it's moss. Um, they have a variant kind of colour and there's nothing saying that one is correct and one is not, so. Now, the, the issue I'm having is this water and it's really upsetting me, so I'll probably start thinking about painting that. Because I can live with that. That's looking, it's looking quite nice, uh, I think maybe so probably do a new layer i love doing this as well so like um sometimes this is quite a rewarding sort of thing to do have your uh your different colors and that and be able to switch them off and on so you can actually see sort of how things are kind of coming to life and that like these feel a lot more 3d now although the log feels a lot better than it did um so so just readjusting the old headset um the next Bob Ross, I'll take that. I will take that. Bob Ross is a legend. Um, okay, so 
let's let's build into this and I know I can so this is where it gets difficult guys water in the Amazon is a odd color it's like this but browner so let's try some of that shall we let's just blend what we've got and see how it looks when I'm done oh that's no, too green um, brown give me some brown darker brown redder brown dark red brown darker still right I'm guessing here this is looking dreadful so let's paint a bit into there maybe get a bit of the big brush not working shrink the brush better because this is going to act as the uh, the water coming out here okay add a bit into there Onto there. Right. Bit onto there, like so. And kind of really just think about how it's going to look. And I know from there what I do is, and I don't use my texture brushes often, but like add a bit sort of like so. Kind of just to suggest that's where I'm going to get aspects kind of coming off spray and stuff like that um, now that is a bit too much detail for what I want but I'm kind of at a point where why the hell not um, apart from there transfer shape to Uh, cool. Add into go dark still. Add into that there, like so, because that's a rock, not a uh, not anything else. in there I'm just getting some reflectivity and go really bright or really washed I'll just add a bit more wash in there once I've got that I can just blend in what I want build on top there I'm really not liking that. As I said, this way, like doing um, sort of texture studies and stuff, will really helps because you can sort of practice your your skills and stuff. So I'm already going too dark because it's going to start reflecting uh, more of what I have in my foreground. Which again, if you guys remember correctly, I don't want to do that at all. The issue I've got is how green it is around here. If that was sort of like a more of a, let's just go for blue and not really dial it in a bit so let's do blue but let's do blue as an overlay colour that might be quite nice and then once we've got that we can keep what we have so far but without um, maybe a bit too dark go lighter ok this could potentially look a bit better when we're done Let's just do that because I can always see because it's on that layer, I can always erase off where it's kind of gone over and stuff like that. So, if I do that and then and grab this, grab that like so, and then go around there like that. Bam. 
backspace on that and it only has to be quickly going over it so it must be amazing because it's on its own layer it's very easy to do the tidy up okay so I feel even that's not really working for me but the benefit is because it's on that its own layer now I can just adjustments uh, hue and saturation and I can just play around with the tones on that which is quite nice and still none of them are looking that particularly good add the saturation potentially and mm. Mm -hmm. okay bit less than saturation bit more than I think I'd rather have a darker like that yeah that's what I'm thinking probably I'm trying to get the water right first and then what I'll do is I'll start painting into that um, I think that looks better as is now um, and then mm, yeah because that, that vibrant green was just pushing back too much so I can paint into that you see uh, so if I go to here I'm actually going to I very rarely use absolute white um, in my images it can it can wash out an image quite a lot uh, but so Um, I'll probably start streaming on sort of like both Twitch, YouTube, and Watch Me Work because I quite like um, YouTube because I'm old and I've grown up with YouTube. But I am interested in sort of like moving across to Twitch, definitely. I think if I do. Oh, so let's go back on that. Sorry, guys. Don't accidentally click the Windows button when you're trying to do. Oh, never a never a good moment. Okay, so what I could do is I could actually start taking these tones and start painting them in. That will help a lot, you see. I mean, you're selling it to me, but I, I was going to do it anyway, so <laughs> so you're all right. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, I will definitely um, I will definitely have a look. I've been told by a lot of people that it's a good sort of like platform to use, so uh, we can go with that. Okay, so I've got some of that purple still in there, but um, I think ah, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, the water feels horrible, um, and I, I'm really not a fan of the purples I've used, but live and learn I think is the saying I think it's this contrast here between the two colors just doesn't really work um, but it's fine at the end of the day uh, because I will be wrapping up in about well in a few minutes guys 
um so any final questions feel free to ask but at the end of the day you know it's all about sort of like living and learning so we'll probably finish this i'll go back to it and have a little look and try and finish it but uh it is not it's like a favorite piece of work. this bit is royally upsetting um let's just try and let's just do an overlay layer and just quickly paint over that because it's going to bug me okay nope No, it's not going to do it for me. Oh. Hmm. I think. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin in it there for tonight. I think that's all my brain can handle. So, I would like to say thank you to everybody for showing up and for the uh, the very extensive Q and A that was going on in the YouTube chat. Um, feel free to do that in the future I'm always happy to sort of like help and um, you know uh, give some advice when I can but thanks very much for tuning in guys and I will catch up with you at a later date Peter out